Hi, I'm Reverend Debbie Ingram. I'm the Executive Director of Vermont Interfaith Action. And we've had a big 12 months since the last statewide convention. Uh, one of the things that we uh, focused on was affordable housing and homelessness. You'll hear from uh, some of our leaders about how that has gone. We also have two different groups working on racial justice, one focusing on economic opportunities, and they've been primarily focused on getting the Declaration of Inclusion adopted by all the municipalities in Vermont, and you'll hear more about that from some of those leaders. We've also got another racial justice organizing committee that focuses on policing, and you'll hear more about that. Uh, we also have an issue organizing committee that concentrates on corrections reform. That group has both focused on the new facility that is going to be built sometime in the next few years, uh, working on a stakeholders committee of uh, allied organizations that meets regularly with the Department of Corrections to be able to influence how the uh, facility will be set up, what programming will be available, making sure that the emphasis is on restorative justice and on preparation for re-entry. And we've also in that group been focusing on uh, a coalition called Decriminalize Vermont, which tries to ensure that harm reduction is the philosophy around those who uh, use drugs and suffer from substance misuse disorders, um, trying to make sure that punishment is and incarceration are not the two top priorities, but that health and humanity are. We also have a group that focuses on immigration reform and has been working with our national network, Faith in Action, and coordinating efforts with them. In addition to our issue organizing committees, we have three committees that focus on the, the geographic area in which they're located. We have a southeastern organizer who sets up groups in the Brattleboro area in Wyndham County and in the Upper Valley in Windsor County, the Norwich Thetford area. And we have another southwestern organizer who is organizing in the Bennington area. Hi, I'm Amy Roth. I'm a member of Temple Sinai in South Burlington. And since December of 2022, I've been a member of the VIA Housing and um, Homelessness Organizing Committee. Hi, I am Beth Ann Mayer, a deacon in the Episcopal churches in Barrie and Montpelier, and a member of the VIA Affordable Housing and Homelessness Organizing Committee. Hello, I'm Karen Shaffield, and I'm a member of All Souls Interfaith Gathering in Shelburne, Vermont. I also participate on two of the organizing committees for VIA. Um, working on this committee has been a quite extraordinary. Um, of course, um, there was a great deal of focus in the legislature in this session, um, in the winter and the spring, on um, housing and homelessness. The Housing and Homelessness Organizing Committee regularly monitors state legislation regarding housing policy and advocates for meaningful change. This includes meeting with state legislators, government officials, and other stakeholders regarding the need to ensure adequate and ongoing housing for persons in need of emergency shelter. If you can believe it, in 2015, we had the hubris to label our campaign Ending Homelessness in Washington County by 2020. If nothing else, community organizing broadens your capacity for humility and perspective. In January of this year, Vermont had three times as many people experiencing homelessness as we did in 2020. And as of August, we have four times as many living outside unsheltered. Um, as we evolved through the session, it became clear, though, that there were not good solutions being offered for the individuals that were in the um, pandemic-era motel and hotel housing program. 
um, and that many hundreds of people were going to wind up out on the streets. So this past year has been a very active year for our organizing committee. After research and consultation with community partners, we published a six-step plan with strategies to render state government more proactive, responsive, and accountable. It heightened the need for close to 40,000 additional units of housing and reaffirmed our moral responsibility to safely and humanely shelter everyone until those units become available. It encouraged expanding the capacity of our human support systems to care for the elderly, the disabled, and the addicted, all root causes of homelessness for more than hundreds of Vermonters. Finally, it recommended steps to reduce further evictions through rental subsidies and prevent evictions for no just cause. We met with many in policy and decision-making roles in the administration and the legislation. We held press conferences, published sign-on letters and news service commentaries. When the initial budget process fell far short of what we needed, we made this visible with more letters, emails, and face-to-face -face meetings, during which we pushed back on platitudes, sensitivity, and magical thinking so that when a veto session reconvened, they changed their hardline stance and at least agreed to continue sheltering the elderly, the significantly disabled, and those with children. I think our committee became more focused um, and more clear that we could not allow that to happen um, and worked on um, you know, pressuring legislators and the administration around that. And ultimately, um, the, while there were people that were released um, from the program in the month of June, a solution was forged with the legislature um, and the administration to maintain housing for um, at least 1,200, 1,300 people. As of August, over 1,200 households remain in hotel housing with about 400 people living in shelter programs and another 400 still living outside unsheltered as the cold weather approaches. Only 34 have been placed in permanent housing since the budget passed in June, and the recent flooding has destroyed hundreds of units across the state. We have a long way to go. So much work to be done, and um, I think a, a, an enormous ongoing commitment is needed to make sure that our administration takes responsibility um, for coming up with long-term solutions um, facing the housing crisis that we have here in the state of Vermont. We will continue to press the administration and the legislature to scale up the provision of shelter, supports, and housing units to meet the goal of housing for all Vermonters. Hi. My name is Lucia White, and I am part of the Racial Justice Public Safety Group through VIA. Our group is focused on helping improve police and community relationships. Um, when I moved back to Burlington in my retirement, I joined up with the working group that is focused on racial justice as it is found in the policing concerns of our communities. I'm Sandra Batchelder, a member of the East Montpelier Old Meeting House. I'm also a member of the Immigration Organizing Committee. And our other goal locally has been to support uh, immigrants as we're able to. We came up last year with a guide handbook for local community groups to use to engage in conversations with their local policing agencies. And we have spent a lot of the year discussing this guide with community members in the hopes of helping them to implement it. Um, we reached out to Burlington in particular. Burlington has uh, not only a public safety council, which is part of a public safety committee, which is under the, the city council, they also have a police commission, which is something that many of our communities would probably benefit from in some form or fashion. We also brought the guide to the BIA legislative breakfast, where we had the opportunity to talk with some legislators about it. Our goal since uh, we started meeting before COVID uh, has been to convince our, our congressional delegates to work for a path to citizenship. Our group has had some challenges this year, but we have learned valuable information 
about how to make our guide more useful. In the process, we have had several discussions with community members about racial justice and policing. We are about to embark on a systematic canvassing of the King Street neighborhood through a partnership with the Healthy Culture Research and Education Fund. They can help us focus on a project that is community-led and important to the King Street area and that works with the police for a common goal. This has been a year of rebuilding for our committee and we have certainly gotten an understanding of how the um, relationship building and organizing um, really has to precede the, um, the, the meetings um, and the events. We are um, excited about um, deepening our collaboration with Migrant Justice and um, look forward to being a visible faith-based um, support um, in their work for humanitarian um, treatment of migrant workers. We ended up meeting another fellow from the Safer Together Communities Program, uh, Judd Allen, who is a Burlington resident, has worked with policing departments in various parts of the country. And thanks to Peggy Owen Sands, our, one of our group members, he has also joined in with us on a, a combined program, which we have just presented to the Burlington's Police Commission uh, for their approval. It'll involve going door-to-door, uh, -door, surveying one specific geographical neighborhood within the city of Burlington, asking the residents about their public safety concerns. The goal being to get as so many answers that we are able to discover what is the biggest or the couple of biggest community concerns for safety, public safety in that particular neighborhood. We will then organize a task force to work on addressing those very specific topics and concerns. This is a, a new project, it's a hands on the ground, it's going to be inviting volunteers to participate as door to door poll takers, survey givers. Um, we have some funding for it. We're looking forward to having interpreters come to be able to speak with people who's, uh, for whom English may not be a first language. Um, this, is, this is the kind of thing that brings tears to the eyes of an old pastor, to think that we could actually do something that, that can make a difference for our local communities. The Racial Justice Economic Opportunities Committee worked this past fall in tandem with the Vermont Racial Justice Alliance to help successfully pass Prop 202. The Prop 2 was uh, updating the language in our Vermont Constitution on slavery. Two things I recall are this committee working on this year. First was working to abolish slavery in the Vermont Constitution. And there had been some loopholes in that. Uh, that had been dangling about for centuries and, and uh, inspired by the community of color in Vermont, uh, there was an effort to tighten that up. Abolished slavery without exception in the state constitution. Once people understood what it was all about, there was overwhelming support, which, which translated actually to, I think, 88% of the vote. Uh, in any event, we had a great experience uh, meeting people, talking to people, and, and helping get the word out. And it was gratifying to see statewide uh, what a strong vote we had. The committee also partnered with the founders of the Declaration of Inclusion and other supporting organizations to encourage towns and cities within the state of Vermont to pass the declaration. After that, much of our attention turned to the Vermont De Declaration of Inclusion. We identified towns and municipalities that we then reached out to to find local champions to help get this declaration passed in their town. Fred Bruner here. I'm a lay leader at the Guilford Community Church, United Church of Christ. We helped get uh, the Declaration of Inclusion passed in several several towns. Uh, first was in Brattleboro. We also um, attended the Guilford Select Board meeting. And to the Declaration of Inclusion passed there, and then also in Vernon, Vermont. And to date, 115 municipalities within the state have done so. We worked on celebrating the first 100 towns to pass the Declaration of Inclusion with a big celebration in May. So all of Brattleboro has had already started a lot of the post-declaration work. Uh, and 
we still need to touch base with Guilford and Vernon in terms of uh, follow-up with them. This committee also monitors legislation on a regular basis and some members attend meetings of the Social Equity Caucus so that we can stay on top of what is happening there. I'm also working on the CARES board in my town and I've served on that board for about five years and we work with people ranging from school age through elders and um, one of my big works in CARES, of course, our CARES board adopted um, the Declaration of Inclusion, and uh, now I'm working to have the town's select board adopt it. Going forward, what I'm looking forward to is the opportunity that we had to connect with persons in different towns. My work took me to some of these different regions, and I had the opportunity to meet in local, some local faith leaders in person, which was a real treat after the recent pandemic. Members of both of these committees, including myself, are heartened by the progress that we've made, but at the same time daunted by the challenges that are still ahead of us. And that really is what motivates us to continue what we're doing so that we can hopefully continue to have an impact within our state. And in the coming year, I look forward to working with my fellow committee members to continue to further the mission of BIA and to make as much positive forward momentum as we can. I'm a member of the BIA Corrections Reform Local Organizing Committee. Uh, as a member of, the, a relatively new member of this particular committee, we have been focusing, it seems to me, on uh, corrections reform, um, working towards getting a bill passed for the decriminalization of uh, drugs. But we've uh, also been working, started recently, more recently started working on a second sentencing project, which involves re-examining the younger population in the correctional facilities who are there for long-term sentences. In our organizing committee here in the Burlington area, I have really participated mostly in the uh, women's correctional facility. This particular facility is in the process of being designed and actually built. And as they're doing that, it is a good time to consider that the environment in which we think would be the healthiest for these women to be incarcerated would be an environment where restorative justice is uh, part of their everyday experience. <sighs> and I also, as a member of this uh, local organizing committee, had the privilege of going to the Faith in Action program that was this past spring in New York City. What a wonderful experience that was. And the speakers were just so inspiring. It was just an eye-opener for me. I think the thing I learned most importantly as part of this local organizing committee is the best way to start is one-on-one, -on -one, talking to people one-on-one, -on -one, which we did a lot of during that time, and getting to know them and having a chance to listen and having a chance to be present with them. It was an experience that uh, I hope I will put to good use here in Vermont. And so I think that as we go about the work of uh, trying to bring about a healthier planet, healthy, healthier society, and to encourage diversity and respect uh, for all people and indeed all creatures, that it's important always to check ourselves out. At the end of each meeting agenda, we hold space for an evaluation of the meeting. Often words such as energized, excited, committed, rise up. Sometimes the words frustrated, discouraged, and uncertain also spring up. But always there are words such as moving forward, making progress, and so happy to be doing this work with you all. You know, I have really enjoyed being executive director of Vermont Interfaith Action for the last 
17 years now, um, almost anyway, <laughs> 17 and a half. Um, VIA is, is a special organization and it's because of all of our leaders who are really interested in making sure that the, we live in a world where our faith values of compassion and justice, values that are shared by all of our different faiths, where those faiths are allowed to flourish and become the real basis of our society. Sometimes it's an uphill struggle. Um, it's been, it's, it's hard, especially in our society these days. And we know that Vermont is different in a lot of ways, which is, which is great. But we also know that we want to hold Vermont to the highest possible standard, not just compare ourselves to other states, but really uh, compare ourselves to the standards that our faith traditions call us to, the vision of a world that is just and compassionate. And so we subscribe to the theory, I think this year, that much has been accomplished, but there is much left to do. And so I look forward to the next 12 months working with all of you, making sure that our faith values are the basis of our society and that every, every human being has the, the hope and the power to make the changes that they want to see for themselves and their families and their neighbors and for all of our communities.